hide your boners and eat some delicious dirt because we have the most interesting thing to happen to women's soccer since... Well, I can't name anything. Showtime's Yellow Jackets is like if Lost had a baby with a rugby team who ate each other. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at season one's ending and answering some of the show's biggest questions. If you haven't seen the show, this might not be the video for you as we'll be going over a lot of the mystery. I've left timestamps to all the topics which also contain theories for season two. So feel free to scroll through to whatever interests you. And last, please consider liking and subscribing or else my wife will force me to live in the wilderness. I'm just kidding, I don't have a wife. Who is Pit Girl? Yes, the very very first scene of the entire show contains one of its most cryptic elements. Here we see an unknown woman running through the wilderness, plummeting to her death in a spike-laden trap. But when we take a look at the clues, we can get a better picture of what's going on here. First, this is the best image of the woman's face. Doesn't really give us any insight who or even if this is one of the survivors from the plane crash. The showrunners have also confirmed they used body doubles for some of the actors in the sequence as to not give away any clues for season two too, but there are a lot of cool things we can still point out. The woman is wearing a clean white nightgown. This is a stark contrast to what the other survivors are wearing, and to me it feels very out of place, suggesting this is either A, not one of the survivors, or B, is one of the survivors but may have been part of some sort of ceremony or ritual. I'll get more into detail about the various rituals we've seen Taisa take part in later on. We haven't really gotten to know some of the other survivors that were on the plane, like the one seen here during the funeral service in episode 3. It's possible it could be one of them. But if I were to make a guess, Pit Girl is one of the survivors who was chosen to be eaten, they cleaned her up, and she was about to be sacrificed in some sort of ceremony, but as we see, she escapes. I can't wait to be proven totally wrong in season 2. It's also a bit weird that this person doesn't seem to know where she's going. She seems lost and disoriented, nor does she know where this trap is, something you'd think one of the survivors would know. Now that could just be because she's in hysteria, just having escaped or it could point at this not being one of the survivors. But then there's this heart-shaped necklace. The last time we saw this in the 1996 timeline was when Shauna gives it back to Jackie, but as we know, Jackie dies at the end of the season. I'm cold too. Well damn Jackie, I can't control the weather. <laughs> We also know Pit Girl can't be one of the present day survivors, and it's probably not Lottie or Van. We see this person hovering over the pit who I think is Van, judging by the type of mask she is wearing and the naked co-ed soccer shirt we've seen her wear in previous episodes. We'll see Van as one of Lottie's followers at the end of the season. Notice also these pink shoes. I went and scrubbed through every episode but couldn't find anyone wearing an identical pair to match up. But if you've seen something similar, let me know in the comments below. Where are they? Now this this one is easy to miss since it's explained by the pilot over the plane's PA system while Shauna and Jackie are talking. The plane was headed from New Jersey to Seattle, but due to a storm the route would be diverting north into the Canadian Rockies. It's pretty vague how far north they went and since Misty broke the flight recorder at the end of episode 2, it explains why no one came for them. And that's also a great question, who would want to break one of the only means of being found? Well, it would be someone who wouldn't want to be found. Misty is such a tragic character and one who is so desperate desperate to be loved and connect with others that she'd break the one thing that could get all of them back to civilization. Throughout episode 2, we see how all the characters praise Misty for her ingenuity, knowledge of survival, and first aid. This is the first time in her life that she feels that she's wanted and part of something. We would be so completely fucked if she wasn't here. This world in the wilderness she is wanted and admired, and the flight recorder represents a threat to that. This is the same reason Misty kills Jessica Roberts. If she were to go and tell the true story of what happened to the girls, she'd be losing these friends. But there's something more here. These girls are trauma bonded, and we haven't even scratched the surface at the things they did in order to survive. If the true story came out of what they actually did, it would be devastating to all of them, and season two will delve deeper into this. One of the things implied in season one is cannibalism. But as Jessica pointed out, if they had to eat one of the others to survive, it would only make people sympathize with their plight even more. People would understand, just like how the public understood how the survivors of a Uruguayan rugby team had to do what they had to to survive. This points at something more here. Could it be that this cannibalism wasn't necessary? And are there other acts even more gruesome yet to be revealed? The symbol and the postcard. Throughout the season, we've seen this symbol. It's been carved on trees, found in the upstairs attic of the captain's con, 
Cottage, as well as the mysterious postcards the survivors received. Now, if you do a quick Google reverse image search, there is no match for this symbol. It's been created specifically for the show. However, there have been some interesting theories out there as to what it really means. One is that it's composed of what are called hobo symbols, symbols used by hobos to communicate with others that indicate things like danger or here is a safe space, but it's not entirely accurate. The other is that it has something to do with trigonometry, trig being something of an Easter egg throughout the season. Not one of those girls gave a good goddamn about trigonometry. I can tell you that much. And one of the more interesting theories out there comes from Redditor Shut Up I Love That, who believes it may be a diagram for how to hang and skin a deer. But if I were to take a stab at this, I think it's purely a symbol to represent Lottie's cult that doesn't need to be broken down into its constituent parts. Does the symbol predate Lottie? Well, even that is up for debate. We can't 100% be sure the symbol found in the attic was carved before they got there because it was Lottie who was the first one up there. When the symbol is seen carved in the tree, well, Lottie could have easily carved that too. As to who sent those postcards, well, I think it's Lottie, perhaps even with the help of Misty. Which leads us to just who in the hell is Lottie, and is she actually possessed by some sort of spirit? We don't know much about Lottie's upbringing. In a flashback to when she was really young, we see how her premonitions started when she distracts her father and they avoid a car crash. We'll later see her overhear her parents talking about her condition. Her mother thinks she can actually predict the future, while her father thinks she needs medication. In a very brief scene from episode one, we see Lottie, who comes from an affluent home with a maid, take a pill of loxapine, a medication used to treat schizophrenia. So is she a schizophrenic who has happened to sway people into believing her psychosis, or does she actually possess the ability to see into the future? That's one of the things the writers have publicly stated they love exploring in the show, the gray area between what is real and not, what can be explained and unexplained. Almost all of the strange occurrences that have happened can be explained in multiple ways. Did Lottie really hold sway over a grizzly bear who let her stab it so they can eat? Or was it just sick and weak, just like the deer they hunted a few days ago? As Misty says of opinions in episode two, quoting Plato, Opinion is the wilderness between knowledge and ignorance. Any way you slice it, Lottie does have a good track record at these predictions, and it only seems to get better as she accrues more and more followers. At the end of the season, we find out that Lottie is still possibly alive and was the one behind closing Travis's bank account, meaning Lottie was likely behind Travis's death and a big cover-up has happened. Speaking of Travis's death, I can't help but think Misty was somehow involved. At the end of the finale, we see Misty as one of Lottie's followers as she sacrifices the bear's heart. Just to whom this sacrifice is to, we don't no, there has only been vague references to quote the old gods of the dirt and sky. Dirt is an interesting choice of words here since we've seen Thais in her dream state eating dirt on multiple occasions. Misty wasn't that shocked when she bore witness to Travis's hanging, and she was also the one to notice how wax stains on the ground created the symbol. The wax stains suggest candles which we've seen all around Lottie during one of her hallucinations, and also hints that a ceremony or ritual was done when Travis was killed. Misty also knows a ton about getting away with murders. She's a true crime fanatic, and I can't help but think she's somewhat of an inside man for Lottie and whatever it is she wants. Speaking of inside man, or woman, let's talk about Thaisa. Or should I call her Senator Thaisa? This has got to be our Lady in the Tree, who we've heard mentioned throughout the season, mainly by Sammy, who he says watches her from his window at night. That's why he's blocked it with pictures. We've also seen Thaisa wake up in a tree in episode 7, and also wake up outside the home's garden. Thaisa's actions can be explained two ways. One, that the stress of the election has caused her to enter a protective state while sleepwalking that makes her do things she might otherwise not have done, and this protective state also happened when she was under stress in 96. Or there's a more supernatural explanation. She comes under control of Lottie or this woodland spirit when she sleepwalks. But interesting to note, this only seems to happen under extreme stress, both in 1996 and the election campaign of 2021. Now, I don't know about you, but this final shot we get at her smirking after her victory seems to hint that this other side of her may be taking over, and if it means getting what she wants, she'll probably be open to it. After all, we're talking about the girl who willingly tackled her teammate, breaking her bones so that she couldn't be a liability in the Nationals. But since, at least at this point, she doesn't know she's doing this stuff in her sleep, we can let her off the hook. And we know that bite she got digging in the dirt was now from their decapitated dog biscuit. Which leads us to the secret in Thaisa's basement. Near the end of the finale, Simone finds a ritual-like shrine containing their son's 
Smash doll, their severed dog's head, heart, and yup, more candles. It seems to be a collection of things cherished by their son, sacrificed in order for her to win the election. Simone is alerted to this hidden part in their basement when a draft, one strong enough to move the pants on their clothesline, alerts her to a vent covered in blood. So she does the only rational thing and follows it to a secret room. This draft suggests there's another entrance leading outside, which might be this right here, perhaps a hidden door. Some have theorized that it might be Van who orchestrated this ritual, or at least helped in some way. Sammy did draw a picture of a red-haired woman, and the blood looks too fresh for the kill to have been done by Thaisa, who has been at campaign headquarters all day. One thing we really don't know a lot about is the fate of Shauna's baby, who, if alive, would be around 25 years old in 2021. Shauna and Jeff, the mother and father, don't seem to talk about it, nor their daughter Callie. Shauna doesn't even talk about it to the other survivors. If there's one thing that is so damning the girls won't tell their story, my guess is it might revolve around this baby. The big question is, what happened to it? The writers themselves actually don't know. One of the writers has stated that they currently have 10 different ideas about what happens to it, and although we do see Shauna eating her chicken baby, it's likely the baby won't be used as a meal, but the writers haven't ruled it out. And what about the man with no eyes? It's most likely just a manifestation of what Thaisa thought her grandmother saw. He can be seen briefly in the opening credits along with another mysterious character we only see for a moment. Jackie's death dream introduces us to a person billed in the credits only known as Hunter. Whether this is his name or profession, we aren't exactly sure, but it does seem as though Jackie may know who he is, or at least he knows of her, saying the line, we've been waiting for you. I'm thinking this is someone who may have died in the past here. As Lottie says of the cabin, bad things happened here. It's possible this guy could be the same person whose plane they found and whose body was discovered in the attic. Who knows, we may even get some form of ghosts next season. Now, hear me out, the writers have confirmed they've been thinking of interesting ways to bring Jackie's character back, and if we've already seen this dude, who's to say Jackie can't come back as a ghost or some form of guilt the girls feel for what they did to her? Are there other survivors that we'll meet in present day? Yes, the writers have confirmed we will be meeting at least one other survivor as an adult in present day. We might even see more. More. We also don't know the fate of Javi, but judging that his brother Travis in present day nor any of the girls mention him, it's not looking good. The final episode leaves with Travis and Nat searching for him. What was the point of Adam? Was he really just there as some artist who Shauna killed for no reason? The short answer, yes. In an interview with Yahoo, one of the writers explained, quote, how sad would it be if Adam really was just a guy who fell in love with Shauna, but that because of what had happened to her, it was an impossibility for her to accept that, end quote. It was Shauna's paranoia something that may have been vital for her survival in the wilderness that would ultimately end up killing the person she was falling in love with. Does Misty kill Coach Ben? I mean, the writers have certainly set this up with her love affair and her finding out that he's gay. Misty did attempt poisoning him in the past. It might be one of those scenarios if she can't have him, no one can, but there's a lot to play around with this next season, and you bet Misty will be pissed Ben lied about being interested in her. Finally, Lottie's last words. It's pretty much confirmed that Lottie ends up being what some of us online have been calling the Antler Queen. We see her wearing the same antler horns and similar attire on Doom's Coming as his Seen in the opening of episode 1. In episode 6, it's a male deer with beautiful antlers that lead her to a bunch of candles during her baptism hallucination, and check out the shot of her framed in front of the antlers. As Lottie gives her the bear heart and what appears to be some sort of offering, she says the French line, Versez le sang, mes beaux amis, which translates to shed blood, my beautiful friends. Remember that Lottie did take French in high school, although one of the girls said she sucked at it. This is followed by the English line, and let the darkness set us free. So it's pretty ominous what she has in store. But I want to hear what you think. Is the show about a bunch of kids dealing with trauma, or do we have a malevolent spirit on our hands? Is Lottie crazy, or has something taken control of her? I'm curious to hear what you think. Thanks for watching everyone, if you liked the video be sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes you can always follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time remember, Daddy loves you very much.